So today a topic we're going to be sharing with you guys our opinions and our views about the new Nikon DF camera that just got released. We were really excited about this new model because it's Nikon's attempt to dabble in the whole retro market. So on Nikon DF they moved a lot of the controls out onto the top of the camera in the form of dials. Changing the settings on these dials is slightly cumbersome. On the shutter speed dial it's easy, you just clicks around and you can select your desired setting and actually if you set it to third step the dial will lock and you'll actually be able to change your shutter speed electronically at the back. This does speed up your shooting quite a lot doing this and if you really want a um, retro experience just press down the locking button in the middle it unlocks the dial and you can change it as well and luckily you can see in the viewfinder what your current shutter speed is as well. To change the aperture on the DF we have to use this front dial on the camera and I must be honest that this dial is not the most user friendly dial on the camera. You can operate it with one finger but it's a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit difficult so it's best to just grab it with two fingers and then you can quickly change it if you have to but just be warned this takes a little bit getting used to. The mode selection switch on the camera is easy to find and easy to change as well. We just pull it up and can, we can change it from manual to aperture priority to shutter priority or program mode. Unfortunately this camera doesn't come with a green little auto mode um, but then I guess if you're after a machine like this you should not need a green auto mode. Changing ISO on this machine is actually really easy and they've done this in a way that I really really like. We have a nice big dial at the top with our ISO settings on. We have a locking button, we press that in, hold it in and you can change the ISO and you can immediately see where you are. This is really handy and I love this feature to change the ISO right there. Selecting the drive mode on the camera is also relatively straightforward like on most of the other Nikons. It's just a matter of flicking a switch between single, continuous, low, continuous, high, quiet mode, timer or mirror up. And it's got a hefty almost 6 frames per second burst rate, which is not too shabby. This camera has a real nice solid feel once it's in your hand. Um, it's also got an interesting weight distribution that's different from the other Nikon models that takes a little bit to get used to. So if we look at it from the top, we'll see that it's actually quite fat on this side of the camera and on the grip side of the camera it's actually quite small and narrow. So interestingly enough, that just gives it a really strange feel in your hand that um, with the other Nikons you have a good solid grip on this side, you can almost shoot one-handed. This camera feels unbalanced then and really heavy to the side. But once you let it rest on your left hand, it actually feels really solid. And it's really light then on your trigger hand to actually work and operate all the dials and everything is easy to get to. So it's an interesting design feature, but works really well with just a little prime lenses or so, but it is a little bit annoying when using your longer zoom lenses. The back of the camera has got quite a nice and neat design to it. Only having the buttons that we really need, they're in an easy place to find. And the buttons got a really great feel to it as well. When you press down on them, we've got a live view function on this camera and the autofocus in live view is surprisingly snappy. Just remember this camera does not have a video mode, it's actually an unadulterated straightforward stills machine. So the only thing that I find slightly annoying on the layout of the back is our light meter selection switch right here. It's actually in the position where you move your thumb around quite a lot and there's actually a good chance that you can knock it and switch it over accidentally to spot meter mode and I've done this a couple of times while playing around with the camera and testing it out and then you end up with exposure problems you can't figure out what's going on until you have a look at the back and see oh I flicked over to spot meter measuring so it would have been nice if they had some sort of a locking mechanism on the switch as well so that's just something to keep in mind when shooting with this machine you can accidentally bump that little selection switch. 
The viewfinder on this camera is a delight to use. It's nice, it's big, it's bright, it's uncluttered in the inside. The only negative I have about it is the fact that they've basically taken the autofocus system from the D600 or D610 and put it in this camera. If you use the D600 or D610, you'll know that that autofocus system is really limited in that it only occupies a really small space of the viewfinder and you can't move the little autofocus points around quite a lot. So that's quite a pity, a really nice machine and once again like the D600 or D610 it gets limited by, well, a slightly gimpish um, autofocus system. Great, so let's just look at a couple more features on the camera. Now to access the battery compartment and the SD card, you have to open it at the bottom. On this little door, at least the door's got some sort of a solid feel to it, although it's probably also made of plastic. Um, what is annoying though, is that it's now a different kind of battery. It differs from the battery in the D600, the D7000 and the D800. So great, if you have those cameras, you can't use the same battery in this machine or swap batteries out. So that can be a slightly bit of a pain. And it only has one SD card slot. This is probably not too bad. You just get a big card if you need to. So what's our final verdict on this machine? Well, it's definitely one of those that you'll either love it or hate it. We would advise you to definitely try this thing first before you run out and buy it um, because it will not suit everybody's shooting style but if you shoot in more controlled environments have a more slower approach to your photography then you'll love the simplicity of this machine and just the sheer unadulterated stalls photography experience.